What if I told you that a long time ago, there was a chance that none of this would have happened? There would have been no Officer Wang, no Amanda the Adventure videos, none of it. <coughs> now take a deep breath and relax, because that was just a possibility. I think today I'm going to tell you guys the story about how I almost died when I was a kid. It's a very serious and traumatic memory for me. One of the first traumatic memories I actually have. But in order to tell this story, we need to go back. Back in time. To when? I don't know. I tried asking my mom how old I was when all this happened. And uh, she said, yeah, you were like 8, 9, 10 maybe. Not older than 13. She doesn't know. She doesn't know. So we're just going to say around 10. All right. When I was just like every other 10 year old, Avatar had just came. Dang, that's probably how I could figure out when all this happened. All right, so I was six. Because <laughs> this all happened when the movie Avatar had just came out. And Avatar came out in 2009. So I was six years old. And I was like every other six year old. I really like toy guns and I love playing outside. And I was playing outside one day. With my sister and my brother Julian. And uh, uh, we had a wagon. And we were sitting in the wagon. And my sister was pulling us around. And there was this thing my sister would always do. She would say stand up. And then she would yank the wagon. And try to make us fall. But the game was. You have to sit down before she can pull it. This time I caught on before I stood up. I was like no. I'm not standing up. Because she told me to stand up. I was like no I'm not doing it. I am not standing up. And then she said, it's a pretty cool bug on the ground over here, you sure? And, uh, hey, I was six, all right? A cool bug? Are you kidding me? You bet your sweet bippy I stood up and I looked, to which I quickly realized I done goofed. It was like a moment out of a movie when, you know, someone gets shot. I stood there, stared at my sister, who had the most evil grin on her face, looked back, Realized there was no bug. And then she yanked the wagon as hard as she could. And I fell right onto my head. Head straight into the concrete. It sounded like if you would have hit a coconut with a hammer. And I don't think I blacked out. But I can't recall what happened immediately. Like the first few seconds. I do remember getting up. Not feeling anything but everything was spinning literally like i've ever seen of a movie like you know when you spin around in your chair or you play outside and you spin around really fast and then for a second when you stop everything's kind of tilting it was like that times one million i remember getting up and being scared because i could barely see anything because everything was spinning and i tried to run back to my mom and i was falling because i couldn't walk everything was spinning i was falling all over the place crying and then i don't know how I got to my mom or maybe she came to me but I remember she said what's wrong what's wrong and I said everything's dizzy I'm so dizzy I can't move and I was freaking out and I remember my mom saying oh snap she didn't say that she swore but I don't swear on this channel and then the hours afterwards are kind of a mystery to me but I remember coming back to it like the next thing I remember was I was in the car with my mom in the parking lot of our hospital in the emergency room part and I remember sitting there and I was like dang I am tired everything was still kind of spinning I was like man I'm I'm tired I'm gonna take a nap I want to go to bed and I started closing my eyes drifting off to which my mom grabbed me by my shoulders and shook me i don't think she actually shook me but she grabbed me was like don't fall asleep you're gonna die if you close your eyes you're never gonna wake up you will die in your sleep and you don't tell a six-year-old with a concussion that oh i had a concussion by the way it was a concussion but i probably should have mentioned that but you don't tell a six-year-old that it was i was horrified mortified i couldn't breathe i was crying so hard because i didn't want to die you don't, she, I don't know why she did that. I still remember it to this day, how scared I was. And that's the first traumatic memory of my entire life. And I was, I cried so hard, so hard. And we didn't know I had a concussion at this point. But I'm pretty sure my mom probably knew something wasn't right. Because I was still dizzy. 
and we got into the hospital they put me in the room i don't know how i got there i can't remember any of that it was years ago but i do remember sitting in the hospital bed and the doctor came in there and gave me this really really weird bag like this really weird bag it was super long. It looked like something you would like buy popcorn. Like, you know, at elementary school, when you buy popcorn, it's in those really long bags. That's what they gave me. And I said to him, why, why are you giving this to me, man? Or I asked him why he gave it to me. And he said, in case you need to throw up. And I said, I don't need to throw up. To which, immediately afterwards, I threw up nonstop. <laughs> For some reason, it was probably just the color of the bag. And I was a kid, and it was my imagination but I remember the throw up being blue one. It probably wasn't blue one. I remember it being very cartoonishly blue one. Like a, like a you know, unnatural kind of blue. And then, um, I guess I must have, I must have been squirming around a lot in that hospital bed. And I guess they were getting annoyed with me or something. Because they literally put like a dog cone on my neck. Or they put something around my neck so I wouldn't move it. And it was the most uncomfortable thing in my life. That was more uncomfortable than the concussion I had. I remember they put me through a CAT scan machine. They did all these tests on me. And I it was it was so weird because I, I remember being out of it the whole time. Probably because my brain just got knocked around in my skull, literally. And that probably is part of the reason why I'm so stupid today. And I can not barely remember what I ate for breakfast. But... I remember the collar thing that they put around me. It had like a sharp piece of plastic that was like stabbing me in the neck the whole time. And they told me they couldn't take it off because they didn't want to hurt me even more. Or something like that. And then I remember... I forget what they did. But I couldn't eat food. I was not allowed to eat food. Or drink water or something like that. But I could eat ice. I remember that. I was able to put ice on my mouth. And I wasn't able to have it, anything else. And I don't know why. To this day, my mom doesn't remember it or anything. But then I remember my dad came in. And my dad's never been in my life that much. I've, I've talked to him. I've hung out with him before. But, you know, my dad didn't live with my mom. Or, and, you know, yada, 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 whatever. But my dad came in. And I was super hyped to see him. Because I love my dad. You know. And I remember him walking in, <laughs> looking at me. And then I think he just left. I'm, I don't think he talked to me. I think he talked to my mom. He might have said hi to me. He probably talked to me. But I had a concussion. so And I was also sick. So I probably don't remember. But I remember it being very uneventful. And then my grandma came. I'm pretty sure. And at one point I started crying again. Because there was a bunch of my family members. In the hospital room with me. And I was pretty sure I was dying. And that's why everyone was there. And I was horrified. I was mortified, you know. It's like those memes you see. Where it's like, you know, when you're starting to feel better in the hospital. And then all of a sudden, like, Boba Fett shows up. Or, like, the Avengers show up in your room. It was like that. But, you know, yeah, it was horrifying. But, uh, yeah, if I very well could have died. I very well could have died. The doctor said I was very lucky that my mom uh, brought me in. And that I didn't stay at home. And my sister got away scot-free scot free she received zero punishment as a matter of fact she got to stay the night at her friend's house so uh, that was pretty cool if i would have done that i would have still been grounded but uh, again never stood up in a wagon again got me messed up my mom says that it was one of the scariest moments of her parenting experience other than my brother coughing up blood when he got his tonsils removed but that's a story for another day well, it looks like we're coming to the end of this story. This is the second story time kind of video that we've done. And I, I enjoy making these. I, I literally am sitting in my chair right now like a like a princess, you know. Legs crossed, I got water next to me. And, uh, you know, I'm just talking to the microphone. I like this kind of stuff. These kind of videos feel a little bit more personal than the usual game video. But enough with the sentimental stuff. It looks like we're coming to the end here, so I guess I'm going to wrap things up. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really do. And, uh, yeah. I'll catch you guys in the next one.